Hey there, how's it going? This is James Tripp. This is Hypnosis Without Trance. Uh, a couple of days ago, I put out a short written blog post called Is Fear Stopping You Developing as a Hypnotist? It was a short written piece, and in there I discussed the idea that if you are setting yourself up um, to be something that you're not, if you're putting yourself forward as being something that you don't feel you can follow through on, for some people this can undermine them. This can create a fear of failure within them because they've set themselves up as something. They're worried about being judged. Their ego gets in the way of them being free to explore and play and be creative with hypnosis. So they end up not doing any because all the time they're worried that things are going to go wrong. Now, off the back of this video, I got a very good question from Dave. Let me uh, share Dave's question with you right here. Hold on. Let me just bring it up. So it says, um, Hi James, I'm struggling to make the transition from hypnotherapy to street hypnosis. I only do a bit of it with some success, mainly because the extrovert showman is a long way from my personality type, and I do it mainly to stretch and challenge myself. I don't like to play the part of the blagger, so would love to be able to approach it more experimentally and not have to pretend to be better and more experienced than I am. The only issue I have is that the person who trained me, who is now a full-time stage hypnotist, was very big on pushing belief plus expectation equals hypnosis. This view is backed up by most of the traditional teachings and even by you in elements of your hypnosis mastery program. If that's the case, I struggle to understand how you can reconcile with the suggestion that you, one, do not pretend to be anything you're not, uh, be willing to be a beginner and a learner, and ask people to help you with your experiments. If a subject's credibility in your ability uh, as a hypnotist is such a factor in achieving success, introducing yourself in that way must stack the odds of achieving a good result very much against you. Am I missing the point? Okay, this is a really good question from Dave. And I think, you know, what Dave's referring to here is a lot of hypnosis teachers teach you to be the hypnotist, to show up with this kind of certainty that you can do these wonderful things and, um, and this is what's going to happen. And there's no question that if you can do that, when you can do that, and you can do that in a really centered, really powerful, really congruent way, that really ups your impact and efficacy as a hypnotist. There's no question about it. It really does help. It is not the totality of hypnosis. It's just something that helps. Except when it doesn't. Except when it doesn't. If that idea, if you can do that, if you have that certainty, uh, you can do it. It's easy and it's effortless. It will serve you. If you don't, well, you're left with a few different choices. What do you do? Well, some people will go the fake it till you make it route, okay? They will amp up their acting skills, they will go out there and they will just pretend that they have certainty. And some people can do that. That works very well for them. Fake it till they make it, absolutely perfect. They go out, they can push themselves, they can get their repeated experience in that they need to develop their skills. Other people, however, it just doesn't work for. Um, and Dave here has said, I'm, I'm not the showman type. If you're not the showman type, it's going to be even harder to force yourself, I would suggest, to try and be something you don't feel you are. So you end up in a place of trying to convince yourself, of trying to convince others, and it leaks out and undermines you. That lack of certainty, that shakiness from the inside out, leaks out and undermines you. If this is the case, trying to be the hypnotist is not serving you. All right. If you could do it, it would serve you. But if it's creating fear... If it's undermining what you are doing, if it's even stopping you from going out and doing stuff, it just isn't serving you. You need to find another way. And the other way I've suggested in this previous post is coming at it more um, from a place of fun, playfulness, curiosity, wonder, coming at it as an experimenter, as a discoverer, as a learner. Now, this is easy to do. If you're curious about hypnosis, you can bring your curiosity to bear. If you're a learner, you can be a learner. You can be who you are and how you are. And guess what? You can do that with absolute certainty. So what I'm not suggesting here when you ask people to help you out with your experiments, I am not suggesting you go up all low status, all nervous and say, excuse me, I wonder if you can help me. I, 
Um, I don't, I, I'm trying to learn hypnosis, but I'm not very good and I need help. Could you, could you be a subject for me? I'm not suggesting that. I'm not suggesting that at all. You see, that's weak. That's low status. That's uh, scaredy um, cats. That's, uh, it isn't going to work. You still want to show up as the leader of the dynamic, okay? You want to be taking charge of what is going to happen, not following. Now, being an experimenter, being a researcher, doesn't mean that you can't do this. All good experimenters, all good researchers take charge of running their research and running their experiments efficiently and effectively and, uh, and very well. Okay, So you're going to be showing up through um, as a leader. Okay, Even though you're, you're, you're being a researcher, an experimenter, a learner even, you're still a leader because you're taking charge of the dynamic. So you're going to come up and say, uh, hi, how's it going? My name is Dave. Um, I'm out this evening conducting some experiments in hypnosis, and I'm curious if you would be interested in helping me out with that. Something like that, uh, or saying, you know, I'm wondering if you'd be interested in helping me out with some hypnosis research I'm conducting here this evening. It's to do with how words, how language can lead imagination. And I'm wondering if you would be interested in partaking in some of these experiments and, and maybe getting a sense for yourself of how hypnosis uh, works. I'm not going to be hypnotizing you out and out because that wouldn't be an appropriate thing to do right here, but just doing a little bit of research around certain possibilities. Are you up for that? Are you up for some fun? Okay, and if they say, yes, fantastic, off you go. Off you go, you start doing stuff. And you say, okay, so um, for this first experiment, I'd like you to all put your hands out in front of you, or whatever it's going to be. And you're still acting with certainty and leading with certainty, and you're still seeding all the ideas about hypnosis. Okay, your certainty, the way you lead the process, the way you've talked about, um, uh, about researching hypnotic response or whatever it will be, you're still seeding all the ideas about hypnosis, you're still acting with authority, you're still coming at it like a leader. But you're not saying, this is going to happen. Okay, so imagine in this situation you do something uh, simple, classic, old-fashioned, you get people to stand up, do like a magnetic hands routine. Okay, you've got three or four people, you say, what I'd like for you to do is really pay attention, really focus on the space between your hands and listen to the sound of my voice as you continue to focus on the space between your hands and hear my voice and notice that now a force begins between your hands that starts pulling your hands together like magnets, pulling your hands together now like magnets. Allow yourself to feel that pulling together. In fact, close your eyes. Bring their eyes closed, whatever. You will get something happening with magnetic hands. Okay, you're going to get something happening. Either hands are going to fly together, they're going to move together a little bit. What you get is the outcome of the experiment. And you say, okay, did you notice anything? You can have a conversation with them afterwards. This is a really useful thing to do. What did you notice? What did you experience? One person might say, oh, I have felt this real buzzing between my hands. You go, okay, buzzing between your hands. Make a note of it if you want, if you're going to go the whole formal research route and have a clipboard, which you can. So what... What did you notice? Well, I didn't really feel anything, but when I opened my eyes, my hands had just come together. Okay, so you didn't really feel anything, but you felt a buzzing sensation. Um, what about you? I don't know, it was like a magnetic field or a magnetic energy. Okay, magnetic field. What about you? I didn't feel anything, nothing. Okay, that's interesting. See, that's how you do it. Um, and then you can take the people who were the responders that you thought responded nicely and maybe start doing something else with them. But the thing is, if you're coming at it with this research... Uh, exploration, experimentation, you can be playful with it, you can have fun with it, you can note what happens, you can genuinely learn because you actually get to ask people about their experiences and this is one of the greatest ways you can develop as a hypnotist. You haven't really lost anything, okay? You haven't lost anything, you're still acting with certainty, you're still being a leader and you get to get yourself a lot of experience. Now over time, the more and more you do this, the more and more you'll find the frame adapts itself and you start showing up differently anyway because now you have the certainty. You've done it enough times, it's second nature now. You know how to run magnetic hands, you know how to do a foot stick, you know how to do a name amnesia. You've done it loads of times, you've seen the variables, you've got yourself the experience. And then that different frame of being the hypnotist can evolve 
uniquely to you, your way of doing it, rather than somebody else's way that they taught you to do it. Your way of doing it, your way of showing up with presence and authority will evolve itself and it will be mm. exquisite, rock solid. It will be something real and genuine and powerful and not something that's just made up because somebody told you you have to be the hypnotist in order to build expectancy. There's lots of ways to build expectancy, okay? So what do we got here? Belief uh, plus expectation equals hypnosis. If you say to somebody, I'm conducting some experiments in hypnotic responsiveness, how the mind flows along with language and leads to certain shifts in people's perception, okay? That might not make sense as I say this now, but let's do an experiment if you would like, if you'd like to join in and see if we can get something happening that will help you to understand what I'm talking about. Are you willing to do this? Yes, I am. So, in you go, you see. Um, you've seeded a bunch of ideas there. You've talked about hypnosis. So you are feeding into the beliefs point in the hypnotic loop. You are setting expectations, because you're talking about doing an experiment to find out about something that you've just suggested is going to happen. So you still are using belief, you still are using expectation. It's still all in there, okay? So what I was not suggesting is you're going, please help me, I don't know what to do. Um, I was suggesting that you show up with that real kind of authoritative, research-orientated, experimentation-orientated. And authoritative can go with playful as well, having fun. They don't have to be different things. Um, but it enables you to be more who you are, where you are, where you're at anyway, uh, and enables you to break through those barriers and get the experience you need to really develop your skills.